What's up? Oof, hair in the face. This is not the way we're starting today. What's up, lads? It's your very blind chick back on your screen with another one. I haven't made this video in a while. How many years has it been since I did a what's on my iPhone? I got you today. I know a few have been asking since I did the How I Online Shop series. Today, we're gonna go through everything that's on my iPhone. This is the 12 Pro Plus Max, I think. So many names for one device. Is it that serious? But I got the largest phone I could get thinking that the text would be larger on this, but it's the same as a seven. So I'm just gonna take the L and go with it. This first page is hella basic. I know this looks like an iPhone screen near you, but it will get more interesting, I promise you. On this page, I have a lot of the embedded iPhone apps, the stuff that comes with the iPhone because it is useful. I got my photos, my camera, over here is Visco Cam, which is vintage to me at this point. I've had this app for years now. I used to use it on the daily when I was on my gram game and posting daily. Lately, not so much. I haven't posted since September on the feed. On the stories, on the daily, check me out, Alicia Inc. But on the feed feed, I need to get my game back up. And I have my financial apps. I like to stay on track. You know, they'd be scamming me. I had my card compromised, not once, but twice last year. And in my entire life, I've had my debit card and credit card a dozen of times. I don't know where I'm shopping at, what I'm doing, but it's been a problem. So I have to look every single day. I also keep track of my finances on an Excel sheet just in case, like it's serious. Next to that is one of my favorite apps, Spotify. As I go through this video, I'll share with you my five favorites as well as the blind chick friendly apps, but Spotify is my everything. I love music and I'm really into podcasts so much that I created my own. If you wanna check it out, it's on Spotify, Authentic with Alicia. But my two newest favorites would be Brunch and Slay and Blue Dope. Check them out, they're really good. I should probably do an updated 2021 podcast video. The 2020 version's over here if you wanna click. But let me know if you wanna see an updated version of that and I'll do one for you. Underneath there are the Outlook apps where all my emails come through, where companies are like, please promote this product. I'm like, this has nothing to do with my channel though. I'm not gonna do that to you. Then I have the Google Books app, which where they do that at, Google on an iPhone, but I have to. You see how much larger the text is on here? I'll show you another app in a minute, but this is where I get all my books from. It's so much easier. I get to keep the love of reading alive, even as I go even more blind. Next to there is Safari, and this is pretty much just here because anytime I look for something on Instagram and it opens up, it opens through Safari, so to be on the same page, it's there. Otherwise, Safari would be at the back of the back because I just, I'm not about this browser. Next to it is Interval Timer, which I've made into a shortcut because the original way the app looked was so, it wasn't it. So I made it more aesthetically pleasing. And this is where I go on the daily. Sorry, it has ads on it, it's so annoying. To keep track of my work ads. So as you can see, I've worked out every day. If you see a missing space, I worked out, I just forgot to hit the start button. But I've been working out every single day for more than six months now. What's really good about this app is you can set it for different things. So I got a yoga life, a gym rat, which sucks, the gym is closed. There is an ab routine and a legs and butt one that I have time for different things. I got my HIIT and my cardio, so I can look back at any time and see how much of what exercise I did weekly. In the last row, I have my day one app. This is where I download my thoughts. It's basically my journal. Next to there is settings because I'm always changing settings on my phone. Underneath it, oh, adjacent to it is the word are two files. One has all of my social media apps other than the gram. These are the ones that I use to promote my YouTube channel. So, I mean, you've seen these all before. Next to that are all of these apps that are just for the gram. So I haven't used these so much. I have one to edit stories, one to edit that pimple on my face that won't go away. Camera's insane. Like. If you wanna look like a whole different person, that's your app. I don't even I don't even touch that, it's sorcery. Then there's a couple other ones that are supposed to edit things, but I truthfully haven't really figured them out yet. And being visually impaired, I don't really have the time to be focusing on that. So let's swipe to the left or the right. Which one is that? I never know if that's a right or left swipe, but let a girl know. This page is so much more aesthetic. 
Here I have a widget smith and in between two eight by eights, it says, don't wait for it, work for it. You know, sometimes you'd be scrolling when you're not supposed to. This is my reminder to get off my phone and get into life. It's also a good reminder that even though our life is on pause, being that it's the life on lockdown here in the six, that I can still do things to work for it instead of waiting for life to happen. Anyway, back to the top of the top, I made it Roji Biv. Can you tell I'm all about that organization? The top are two YouTube apps, one to watch, one to create. Then there's the Flickr app, which I haven't used since Paris. They changed it, it used to be unlimited. You could put as many pictures as you wanted. So I went ham and then they changed the restrictions to a max of a terabyte, which is still a lot, but I done used it out. So I don't really go there as much. Then there's a dots app, which I should probably delete, but it still looks pretty. So I left it there. It's a game that I used to love playing when I would commute, but seeing as I work and live and sleep and play in this neighborhood, I don't really play it anymore. Underneath there is the iTunes app, which I haven't really used so much, but sometimes I'll ask Siri to play a song that's not on Spotify through there. Sometimes it's haunted and it turns on on itself for no reason. I don't know where, and I'm just like, our father who art thou in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> like, it's no joke. Next to that are where I get my coffee fixes at. There's the Second Cup app and the Starbucks app. I changed this one too because that green was not doing it for me, so I made it more of a neutral tone. Another shortcut, and I'll show you where it's at when we get closer to that. Underneath the don't wait for it, work for it is the files app. So anytime I download something large, that's where it's stored. I didn't know for the longest time. So when I finally discovered what this app did, I had like 55 of the same file because I kept downloading it, not knowing where it went. Besides that is good old Shazam. If you hear a bop, a tune you've never heard before, it lets you know and it downloads it to Spotify now, which is pretty clutch. Besides that is Podcasts. This is an app that's been on my phone since the beginning of time, but... I only started using it since Joe Budden got in a fight with Spotify. So now the JBN lives here. And I also listen to my spiritual manifesting podcast occasionally here. You know how I feel about LOA if you heard my Stargard story time, but sometimes I try to draw from it what I can. We can do a separate video on that if you're interested. Here is J Lux label, which you probably recognize. And there's stuff in my cart. Don't judge me. The obsession is real. Then we have some more online shopping stuff, which you saw in the online shopping guide video. So there's Urban Outfitters where I get my home goods. Then there's Zara where I get everything because Zara is my everything. Allo Moves is the app that I use every day to get my workouts on, but I don't use it through here. I actually use it over there on my computer. If you watch my vlogs, you usually see it playing in the background. I have it on here because if I ever want to meditate, it's so much easier to click on here close my eyes, zen out, instead of turning on my computer in the morning or just before I doze off at night. What's next? Sephora. I don't really use this app so much anymore. I used to be a Sephora fiend, but since the pandemic started, I'm like, you know what? I need to keep my coins in the bank just in case. Plus, what do I need all this makeup for? Where am I going? I just put on makeup for YouTube anyway. This is where things get really interesting. I have a big widget of my friends just to cheer me up and just remind me that there's good people out there. Four widgets, of course, Shopaholics Anonymous, where you at? I got the Aloe Yoga and the Lululemon on deck, just in case, you know, I want a new pair of yoga leggings. I'm wearing yoga leggings right now. They're the most comfortable thing of life. Underneath that is a meditation app, which is like a user created content type of situation. There are millions of meditations on there. So you can find anything your heart needs, deserves, desires up on there. Just be warned, it's gonna take you a while. Sometimes it takes me longer to find the meditation I need than the meditation itself. Next to that is the pattern app. This is what I call sorcery in an app. I put in my date of birth and time and I was just like, wait, it knew me to a T. It was so crazy, I had to post it on the community tab. Check it out if you wanna see. Besides there is a smaller square app this is a hourly app. It's a Pinterest throwback. So if you click on it, it goes to my vision board ask Pinterest board, and it just shows me of things I want to see or embody. There's also a lot of Marrakesh spas there just to remind me what it was like when I was in Marrakesh, just things to, I don't know, just like a vision board. It just gives you that feeling. So if you ever want to be motivated, you're just like, Ooh, on the fourth and final page is a rectangular widget of my guys. I love them. Underneath there is a lot of files and folders. I have a whole admin folder. 
where they do that at. I used to work at a middle school, so I need to have this type of stuff on deck. I don't use it as much as I did back then, but every once in a while you might need to do something on the go and you have it right there at your fingertips. Besides that is the cluster mess of iPhone apps. These are apps I either A, cannot delete and have tried to with every iPhone update, or B, I've told myself if and when I need them, they're here. Underneath is the most random app collection of all time. I got a flashlight and a ringtone maker. Besides that are my travel ones, so Uber and Lyft, which if you're visually impaired, it's such a struggle to type in the address, make sure it's right. How many times I've called an Uber to the wrong place? This one changes daily, not hourly. It's my old thumbnails. Last year I went through this whole like, I wanna be a minimalist thing, didn't happen, but I did delete over 200 of my YouTube videos. I'm just like, you know, if it didn't hit and you didn't click, it doesn't need to be on here, so bye bye But I wanted to keep the thumbnails via Pinterest to remind myself of all the content I've created over the years. Underneath there is the Starbucks and timer app, the ones I showed you before. You need to have them somewhere on here so that the shortcuts app can retrieve it for you. So I put it at the back of the back. Besides there is Flip, which I used to use religiously before the pandemic. But now that there's lines for the supermarket, I'm not gonna go to each supermarket for one thing on sale. I'll just get whatever I can when I go. But that was so clutch when the world was open to get things on crazy discounts. Besides that is the widget smith. So that's how I'm able to make all the widgets I've showed you throughout this video. And onto the last row is iMovie, which I don't really use anymore. I used to use a lot when I had better vision, but it's so hard editing content on such a tiny screen. So what I do is I'll make a Insta story or a reel on Final Cut Pro and airdrop it here. Besides that is Hinge. If you wanna know how that's going, you can check out my last vlog, Men Are a Mess. Besides that is the Big Magnify app. So if I ever need to zoom in, this goes all the way up. Like if I can see it, you can see it too, because I'm super, super visually impaired. I usually use this, so tap here three times, not five because it calls the police, and I've done that way too many times. But then you can zoom in quickly through the embedded shortcut. You can see I zoomed out to the max though, so sometimes I need a little extra magnification, and that's where that app comes in. Last and least, for the first time ever, is the Canon EOS app, because this is not working for me. I try to connect it, to the camera I'm filming with now and it doesn't work. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's not that serious because all I wanted to be able to do was get the pictures from here onto here more quickly. Instead of having to go through my camera, to my computer, to my phone, I thought it'd be better to just go straight, but it doesn't work. So I should probably delete that one. But that's everything on my phone. Recapping my five favorites would be Google Books, Spotify, Instagram. Day one, because that's how I get out my emotions. The interval timer, because that's how I keep track and stay motivated to work out daily. But that's that on that. Those are all my favorite apps. Let me know what yours are down below. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe to show you care. We're on the road to 20K by May, so definitely show that you want this platform to grow and you like this kind of content. And until next week, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.